Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever living banless boo boo stain. I feel like I just said that like yesterday <laughs> off of that like and subscribe button. As yes, we're already talking about the banless. Now, you may be thinking, Avery, we're not even into November yet. Why in God's name are you already talking about a banless? Well, Let's be honest, at least in my humble opinion, the last regional that I had as a Florida Yu-Gi-Oh! player is today in Hollywood, and it's about five, six hours away, and I didn't want to go because one, I'm sick of this format, two, five to six hours for a very small regional out of Cool Stuff Games Hollywood. They have up to like 200 people, so if you go X2, you're not going to get your invite. Kind of a waste of a time and the drive. So I pretty much sold off most of my collection, and I made money off of my Rage of the Abyss case and whatever, blah, blah, blah. I talked about that before. I want to focus more on content creation and talking about the ban list and uh, just focusing on having fun with the game and testing for YCS Orlando. Yes, it's not till February. Yes, I'm sure we're going to have a new ban list come uh, January 1st of 2025, like Konami did of January of this year. They gave us a new list. But I want to talk about it regardless because you have to keep in mind that we are pretty much in this format until the end of the year. Come, I believe it's December, we get the Crossover Breakers side set, which will have both Rizal and Malice. But I don't really think Rizal and Malice are going to get direct hits come, let's say, January or at the earliest, I say like late December that we get another ban list. I don't think that they're going to hit Rise All Malice. I think they're going to hit cards indirectly to hurt those decks potentially. And even so, I don't think Rise All is going to be as good of a deck as we're hoping because we don't get 7th Tachyon until a week after the YCS in Orlando. We get it like February 11th. So Rise All will still be good, but it won't have that extra bit of consistency through 7th Tachyon. And then, of course, the Catapult Turtle FTK won't be viable until we get 7th Tachyon. And even then... The FTK is kind of garbage, but I could see Konami maybe hitting Catapult Turtle uh, just to avoid the issue. So let's just go ahead and go through it. These are my initial thoughts. Um, obviously, you know, let me know down in the comments if you think that there's something that I'm missing or that I didn't discuss. Um, these are sort of like my thoughts after kind of, you know, looking through decks for about 10 to 15 minutes or so. Oh, and of course, I almost forgot about Albion. Uh, Albion needs to be banned so that we can finally deal with the gimmick puppet lock issue. So let's start off with the bans. So... I'm going to say it every format, uh, every balance discussion. I don't care if, you know, people say, Avery, it's never going to happen. This is our equivalent of Max C. I don't care. It needs to happen. Uh, Dimension Shifter needs to go. And the reason why I'm still going to say it needs to go is because Malice is another Shifter deck. It's like Flunder. It doesn't really care about Shifter. It doesn't mind its cards getting banished. There are some niche cases where it wants the grave, but overall, uh, it can play under shifter just fine, still make a Neo Tempest terahertz, or at least have some sort of backup plan to still make a great board under shifter. The deck can main deck shifter. Shifter needs to go. Um, I don't care if people start playing Artifact Lancia because Malice is a kind of a banished cyber strategy deck. Uh, if you don't see uh, the Lancia going second, you're just going to lose. And even then, Malice is still going to probably put up just an insane board with or without shifter. Shifter needs to go. Uh, I think that it would just make plenty of players, myself included, very happy. Um, you've already eliminated cards that needed to be eliminated, like Baron, Apollosa, Lacrima, things like that. Let's put Shifter on that list as well, along with Floodgates. Next up is OSS. Um, as you can see, clearly, I've got other hits on here, two Snake Eyes. Um, I think it's finally time that we took out OSS. Um, you know, Azamina is getting more support in Supreme Darkness, and I've seen some comments where, like, it's not Snake Eyes support, it's simple Spoil support. At the end of the day, you're tired of Snake Eyes. I'm tired of Snake Eyes. Your grandmama's tired of Snake Eyes. We want to see this stuff get hit. And I want to see like what happened in the OCG where basically they put everything to one. Like they put Poplar, Oak, and Ash to one. They put Wanted to one. They put Black Witch to one. Like they really decimated that deck. I saw a video um, just earlier today where someone did the math and they're like, Snake Eyes has been a uh, tier one slash tier zero deck. It has been the reigning supreme deck even longer than tier element was at its prime at like tier zero 307 days was like the number it came out to which is insane so over 300 days is the best deck it's time to take it out back next up here is catapult turtle now this is kind of more preemptive i don't know if konami is going to hit this but i at least wanted to put it on everybody's radar um the ftk with catapult turtle 
involves um, using things like Seventh Tachyon to get your consistency searches um, in order to basically crap out Draglubion to go into Numeron Dragon with like 16,000 attack, drop out a Catapult Turtle, tribute the Numeron Dragon, and you win. Um, so if the Numeron Dragon is at 16,000, even if you're under Prosperity, that's still 8,000 damage, cutting it in half. Um, which it's half of the tribute to monsters attack. So if you play prosperity, then it's going to drop it down to 4,000. But I mean, if you don't hit the prosperity, then 16,000 is still going to be 8,000. I don't think that the deck is going to be all that great in the TCG, but you know how TCG players are going to abuse any FTK that they can. If TCG players are willing to play good going first cards when they know they're going first just to win out the game, whether it's with Floodgates, Solemn Judgment, whatever, you know players are going to be trying this out. So I think Catapult Turtle needs to go the way of the Dodo. Moving on to uh, the Limiteds, at least for up here, uh, we're going to be talking about some other potential bans and things, um, like Sanctifier, just to get this out of the way real quick. I think that Sanctifier should be banned. Um, gimmick Puppet Locking is obviously not healthy. I don't think I really need to explain that. Um, moving on to the Fiendsmith package, I think that Fiendsmith Engraver really needs to go to one. Um, I could very easily see that happening on our next list. Um, the Fiendsmith engine is just good. I don't think I really need to explain it. If you're a competitive Yu-Gi-Oh player or if you're at least somewhat familiar with the Fiendsmith cards, you know how good these cards are. Moon of the Closed Heaven isn't the problem. It's the Fiendsmith cards themselves. If it weren't for cards like Fiendsmith Requiem existing where you could go Closed Heaven into Requiem, we wouldn't have to worry about that. So I think hitting Engraver or even possibly banning Requiem just so that you don't have that basically generic with Closed Heaven option to go into the Fiendsmith package and setting up a Wave High King Caesar. I could see Konami doing something just dumbassery and banning Wave High King, which is like, okay, I guess you don't have an, an auto like scoop button for the opponent to hit if like their nib gets outed. But I think leaving the Fiendsmith package at full power and just banning Wave High King I don't really think that solves the issue. And I think people are just really tired of the cards at this point. Um, wanted to one, I don't think I need to explain that. Same with Black Witch. Um, Chandra, Pydra, and Sangin Kaiman all to one. I believe Chandra and Pydra went to one in the OCG and not Sangin Kaiman. But either way, some combination of these cards need to be hit. Now, the devil's advocate to that statement is that Rizal has a very good matchup against Tempai. Tempai actually has a lot of issues playing against Rizal. Maybe that will be the balancing factor to where we don't see them get any more hits. Um, but I could very easily see Tempai, especially Chandra, getting hit to one, even with the release of Malice and Rizal, more importantly. Um, but I do think that this deck needs more consistency hits because just seeing a Chandra and the opponent has no way to stop you is game. I mean, the deck is absolutely insane. And especially now with the reprint of Trident Dragon, I would argue it's the most budget of the meta decks and it's really fucking easy to play. Like if your boy can get 10th place with a Cash Tira variant when the deck first dropped before we had Genroku, like, yeah, it's it's a good deck. Uh, we already talked about Black Witch, just more Snake Eye hits. Um, Spirit of Ubel and or Nightmare Throne. Nightmare Throne went to one in the OCG. I think some combination of Spirit and or Nightmare Throne need to be hit. Um, there are even some decks that I've seen where they're playing like a small Ubel package where they may play like a couple copies of Throne with like a couple copies of Spirit of Ubel and then the OG Ubel just to have access to Phantom, which Phantom needs to be hit. It needs, I would say it really needs to be banned. I think putting it to one really doesn't do anything. Um, I think banning it and then like limiting either Throne and or Spirit would really help check the deck. I'm sure some people are going to say, well, Avery Snake Eyes is sort of like overtaking you, Bell, now with the Azamina cards. True, but if you get rid of Snake Eyes Azamina, then the vacuum just becomes open for things like you, Bell, which as cool as the deck is and as fun as I think it is, it really does need to be hit. It, it just... It needs to go, and everybody is tired of these one-card combos absolutely popping off, 15-plus hand traps in the main deck. We need to really reel all this in and, you know, take a good, hard look at the game and, you know, say that these things need to go. Um, runic tip to one. We don't need runic stun players out here thinking that they're untouchable. Uh, runic tips need to go to one for quite some time. Maybe fountain will go to one. I doubt that. Um, I think having the generic kits to, like, hitting tip to one and things like that would be great. Bonfire to one because it's just a really good searcher. And... I've been kind of advocating for this for a while, I feel, at least on my previous balance videos, I believe I brought this up. Heavy Storm, I think, could finally come back to one. Um, you know, it's been at one in the OCG for a while, and I think having one Feather Duster, one Heavy Storm with two uh, Lightning Storm, even with three evenly matched, I think is not terrible. I think having more uh, Board Buster cards 
is overall healthy for the game, especially like if something like Tempai gets hit and someone wants to try and play a different going second deck besides Tempai, I think that giving them the ability to be able to play a card like Heavy Storm is totally fine. Um, I can't really think of a deck off the top of my head that wants to like Heavy Storm their own board, unless like they're trying to cheat against like, I don't know, a burn player or something and like activate heavy storm and they have no back row that's something that people used to do on my dad all the time back in the day funny enough like they'd have no field and they go heavy storm just to get it out of their hand it's like you don't have any back row to destroy like it, it was so toxic like people would get so heated anyway um yeah i think that it could come back so this is something that i saw one of my subscribers comment on my uh video about mole charming nyarla last night um called by to three now could we see this happen I don't think that we could be living in a world where three call by and three cross out with three talents and three thrust all exist in the same format. I think if we're going to see call by move to a number any higher than one, I think we're going to see talents thrust and or cross out be hit to some degree because you know that there's going to be players, especially in the TCG, who will play like three cross out, three talents, three call by and just hope for the best. Nine outs to hand traps, uh, especially like if they can play like, you know, 12 to 15 themselves with all that in there. Like, they just want to be completely untouchable. So I think if we move call by to a number any higher than three, even if we move it to two, I think we could see cross out going to two or to one, especially with how many mole charmies we have in the format. Um, with that being said, I kind of want to dive into some other things down here that are just on my radar that I think maybe should be hit. I think that Promethean Princess should possibly be banned. It's just been around for so long, and it helps fire decks so generically well. I think that by hitting things like Promethean Princess, especially with generic fire support like Bonfire, Snake Eye cards being basically good generic fire support, I think that you can kind of leave the Fire King stuff alone for the most part, because even with the Fire King structure deck, I think if you built Fire Kings without the Snake Eye stuff, without Promethean Princess, with only one Bonfire and the Fire King structure deck stuff, I think the deck is fine. Um, I don't really see how it could be, you know, any better than maybe Tier 2 or Rogue at that point, um, because it, it's not the Fire King cards, it's the Snake Eye cards. Um, along with that, I think that we could potentially see hits to Thrust and Talents. People have been wanting this for quite a while. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me to see these cards maybe finally go to one. Uh, I don't think two would really be something that the TCG would do. But hitting these cards to one, I think, could really happen. You know, would they be luck sacky as far as, like, you know, you're in game three. You know you're going first. You bring in Thrust with, like, a D-Barrier or something. And the opponent hand traps you. And you hit the Thrust to set the D-Barrier. And now you've got the Floodgate. Yeah. Does that still contribute to these, what I'm going to call, luck sacky game threes where you side deck in Floodgates, like, D-Barrier, different dimension ground, whatever, and then you hit the thrust to set it and you win. Yeah, that's not healthy Yu-Gi-Oh. But I think it's uh, it's a, just about high time that we hit these cards to some degree, potentially. Um, Fountain, I already talked about it with Tip. Possibly seeing it going to one, I think could be good. Possibly maybe a ban on Silvera because it is a very easy to bring out Omni Negate. So it would hit the end boards overall in as Amina decks. I don't know if we would see that hit, but it's just something that I wanted to throw out there and get the community's thoughts on. And then last but not least, the Mulcharmies. Could we see hits on the Mulcharmies, assuming that we get a ban list as early as late December or as late as like early January? <sighs> this is the biggest question mark for me because the Mulcharmies, uh, at first Perulia was fine, it's whatever, but the release of Fualos, for me personally, has really hindered my ability to enjoy this game. And this is coming from someone who bought a case of Rage of the Abyss and pulled a playset of Wallows, and I just end up selling everything and just made money off my case. I don't know if Moltrarmies are really that healthy for the game. I don't think that sitting back and watching competitive play, or even playing myself, and being able to go Wallows plus D-Shifter, have fun trying to play, and making the opponent pass turn is healthy. That's not healthy at all. And I think that if that continues, I think we kind of end up in a max C situation where if you get max seed, you have to start playing like the fucking OCG where like you're going to set a couple floodgates ideally and hope for the best, or you're going to pass turn on an open board and then you're going to mold charm the opponent. And then you're playing this game of who opened up more hand traps, who hits who with the mold charm And that's really not healthy. And it really kills my enjoyment for the game. Like, I'm trying to play test for YCS Orlando, and I'm just not having any fun when I'm getting hit by these mulch armies. I'm not even really having any fun hitting my opponent with them because it's like they're sitting there with their mulch armies in their own hand, like, okay, well, I'm going to pass turn and mulch army you right back. 
or the opponent doesn't have a mole charming they just have to pass turn and it's like bro you didn't even get to play the game like i'm sorry <laughs> like that's not fun that's not enjoyable and i feel like something needs to happen my enjoyment for the game is at an all-time low maybe it's just because i've been playing for over a decade but I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of lost for words at this point talking about mole charmies. But guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Um, what are some hits you would want to see on the ban list? Uh, would you want to see set rotation coming into the game where we just knock a bunch of stuff out? I wouldn't want to see that. I think that the card design as a whole just needs to be toned back. But I think that maybe these hits could be a good starting point overall. Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.